Welcome to In the Word, a study of the International Bible School lesson. Join Dr. Lee Magnus, Professor Emeritus of Bible, and Dr. Bill Gwaltney, Professor Emeritus of Bible, both from Milligan College, as they bring you their thoughts and knowledge of the study of the Sunday School lesson for the day. Now, here is Dr. Gwaltney. Good morning, friends of In the Word. We're so glad you could be with us today. Dr. Magnus could not be with us today, and uh, so uh, Dr. R. David Roberts will be uh, pretend to be Dr. <laughs> Magnus for us today, and, and uh, he has been a longtime friend, uh, also a prof professor emeritus at Milligan. So, Dave, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to be in. here. Thank well, you. wonderful. Well, we have been uh, following a series of lessons for a whole quarter on the theme of creation, a divine cycle. And um, I'm not sure cycle is the right word, a divine uh, definition or a divine uh, expression of growth in the mind of God and making Jesus available to the world. Mm -hmm. And we started in the Christmas season uh, following the story of uh, the birth of Jesus from Luke's gospel. <clears throat> then we spent a whole um, time on a month on uh, the Psalms and how the Psalms praise God for being a cre the creator. Mm -hmm. I counted 50 out of the 150 Psalms which divine God as creator. It's a big theme in Psalms. It is definitely emphasis, yeah. Yes, and so now we have turned to the um, letter of Paul to the Galatians uh, to find out how the life of Christ has impacted the world through uh, the Christian community, the church. So uh, that's where we are. And uh, I think you've uh, caught up with us uh, yes. pretty well. <laughs> Galatians is a one of the, the best of Paul's letters. It's unique in a lot of ways, but it has some tremendous emphases for Christians. Well, we both taught a New Testament survey at Milligan. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think we probably taught it about the same way. Um, I always like to say, well, this is Paul's angriest letter. I used to emphasize you can almost see the scorch marks on the page. <laughs> It's a hot letter. <laughs> it, it, it very much so. In fact, you know, Paul's pattern for writing a letter uh, was always the same. He would name himself and a co-author uh, if uh, necessary, mm -hmm. and then the destination, and then he would have a uh, salutation mm -hmm. and grace and peace usually, and then he would have a thanksgiving. I give thanks to God for you all because mm -hmm. of one thing or another. And then he would get into the body of the letter. Start with a positive emphasis before he did, usually. Yes, but not in Galatians. No, no. There's, there's an absence of that in Galatians. There's no thanksgiving at the beginning. It's no. the only one of his letters that does not have a thanksgiving. Yeah. I, he's angry. No. There <laughs> were some writes. serious concerns on Paul's part. The churches there were having some real problems that he felt had to be dealt with. Yes. Well, maybe we ought to define, you know, this is a circular letter. It's, it's one of Paul's letters that went to a number of churches in a given area. Where was Galatia? Well, it's in the, an area of Turkey, and it's where Paul uh, started his first missionary journey. And in this one being written later, people always questioned, why didn't Paul mention a lot of the people's names? But that emphasis that it was a circular letter explains that. Yes. Galatia then would include the churches where Paul went on the first missionary journey probably. Right. And then, but he returned there on the second missionary yes, journey. Yes, went through that same area. Right. And the process, of course, took Timothy with him and moved on through that area. Yeah, right. And then, and then returned to um, Jerusalem, um, Antioch of Syria and Jerusalem, and then left for a third journey. And we think it's, um, and he went through this area of Galatia uh, on his way to Ephesus mm -hmm. on the third journey. And it's likely then that 
he um, wrote this letter back after having passed through mm -hmm. uh, Galatia. Now, Galatia would include those churches where he went on the first journey. It would be Derby, Lystra, Iconium, mm -hmm. Antioch, Pisidia. Right. In the, it's, it's up on the plateau in central, what's the day central mm -hmm. Turkey. Yeah. Um, and about the year 54, some place 54 or 5 in that area. We right. Know for sure. Yeah. And, and it appears that as he moved through that area on the third missionary journey and got over toward Ephesus, that probably became aware of some of the issues and problems, but then wrote back to deal with them after he got to the coast. I wondered if he saw any of this as he was going through these and visiting these churches. So it makes you think that he's, he's seen or, or talked with people and heard some of the things that were going on to the point where it was a, a real concern. And the concern, um, you know, we, we've had, we haven't really read and studied the entire book of Galatians, mm -hmm. of Galatians to the Galatian churches. Uh, but um, we can maybe summarize it like this. The whole question is, uh, how is salvation brought to individuals? That is eternal salvation mm -hmm. brought to individuals. And uh, apparently there were those uh, who were going through the churches saying, you got to keep the law, or at least part of the law, mm -hmm. including male circumcision. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is what defines a Jewish man. Yeah. We, we refer to those teachers, those people who are emphasizing that as Judaizers. It's a word not used in the New Testament, but it describes who they were, that they were trying to push Judaism again, even on Christians. Right. Well, you can understand the logic. Mm -hmm. All the first Christians were, in fact, Jewish. Mm -hmm. They observed the Jewish laws. They worshiped in the temple. And they understood what restrictions existed for people who wanted to um, demonstrate love to God. Mm -hmm. And so these pagans coming into the church have none of that mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. So why, obviously uh, they ought to. And of course we thought that the conference in Jerusalem in the year 49 had settled all that. That's what they thought, but it, it kept <laughs> cropping up again. <laughs> And right. it's, it's yeah. interesting and, and ironic and sad that it continues to crop up even today. In the years of my ministry, I can remember people who became enamored with the Old Testament to the point of saying, if all those laws are there, then that surely means what God wants us to do now. And began to emphasize that that's what it takes to be a Christian, a real Christian. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing that was going on in the early church. Well, the dietary laws and the, the Sabbath laws mm -hmm. and some things like that. But generally speaking, those people who require that don't keep all of the right. law. Right. Uh, according to rabbinical count, there are 613 laws in the Torah, the mm -hmm. first five books of the Old Testament. And of course, the Jewish way of looking at this is, if you break one of these, you're done. Mm -hmm. And that, and Paul wrote on that theme, and it's going to show up in today's scripture. Mm -hmm. So um, it's uh, uh, it, it, it's you, you're either all in or all out, as far as Paul was concerned, mm -hmm. and he's going to make that case. Yeah. Uh, why don't I read the scripture today? Uh, out of the NIV text. Okay. That's what uh, most of our uh, folks have and are, are following. There are some out there that prefer the King James Version. Mm -hmm. You know, Standard Publishing puts it out in two forms, the NIV and the, I think, the New King James. Mm -hmm. And we, we have traditionally followed the NIV. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let me read, and this is chapter 5, verses 1 through 17 of Galatians, and we're going to have to do some filling in um, uh, when, when we finish reading. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. 
Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You were running a good race. Who cut in, you, uh, in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the, uh, the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, Watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh, uh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Okay. I think That's it's a long passage. It is. I think it's important to say right away, too, that especially in today's context, Paul is not talking about male circumcision as a physical act that people practice today on male babies for health reasons or traditional family reasons. He's talking about this as an act to please God and earn your way to heaven. Well, not only that, but it is a way for you to become a Jewish male. Right, and, and the, his point is that's, that's not what's gonna get you into heaven. And as it, he goes it, on to say, in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision matters. Okay, now that's the principle. Uh, it doesn't matter whether you are circumcised or not, and that's not from a medical point of view. Right. It's from the point of view of whether you are pleasing to God because within Jewish experience, uh, if you are a Jewish male, you are circumcised. Now let, mm -hmm. let's point to a couple of cases in the New Testament that we have record of, clear record of. Mm -hmm. In Acts chapter 16, verse three, uh, Paul has come upon Timothy, at the beginning of his second missionary journey, and Timothy, uh, he wants to take with him as a uh, you might say uh, a, a learner, protege, almost. protege, and um, what do you what do you say in the world of uh, skilled labor? Um, not a journeyman, but a, a an intern or a novice. Yes, or, yeah. yes, and um, <clears throat> but uh, Timothy's mother was Jewish. Now, in Jewish law. You, whether you're Jewish or not depends on who your mother is. Uh, I know that sounds backwards, but that's the way it was. And his father was a Greek. Mm -hmm. So he had not been circumcised. But Paul wanted to take Timothy as a Jewish lad 
into the synagogue with him. And he knew that uh, the fact that Timothy had never been a son of the covenant, that's the terminology that's used. Hmm. Uh, and uh, the, circ- the act of circumcision is a part of the process by which a baby becomes mm-hmm. a Jew. Uh, and so he demands that Timothy be circumcised, not for his personal salvation, but so that this would not be a hindrance right. uh, in the t- in Acceptability the in the synagogue as a, a speaker or co-leader with Paul. Or even someone allowed in. Right. Now, in Galatians, this same book, in chapter 2, verse 3, the reference, clear reference is made to Titus, Mm -hmm. who is with Paul on the third missionary journey. He is a Greek. Mm -hmm. And Paul did not allow him to be circumcised. Thus, the statement in in verse um, 6 is borne out in action in a way in which uh, Paul um, de- dealt with Timothy and Titus. Mm-hmm. Isn't it interesting? In the latter letters of Paul, there are two to Timothy and one to Titus. Right. Yep. <laughs> and yes, so <clears throat> that's a very important issue. Mm-hmm. Circumcision was not a medical issue no. in that day. And, and as Paul says in verse 7, you were running well who cut you off. And okay, now that, that, explain that. Okay, he's using the, the idea of a, of a runner. And in the process, someone cutting you off, breaking your pace, interrupting your, your rhythm, it's messing you up as far as running the race. And Paul's saying that you were doing fine and your, your dependence upon Christ. Now who's cut you off in the process and, and thrown you into a a pattern of depending on something besides Christ. Uh, almost uh, eliminated you from the race. Right. Where you're, you're <clears throat> not looking to Christ anymore at all. And that's exactly what this verb means. Mm-hmm. To cut off someone, to cut in on someone's conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, hence, to delay or to hinder. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, this uh, is a quote. Verse 9 is a quote. Uh, a little yeast works through the whole R leavens. Yeah. Would, I think it's a more traditional translation, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yes, leavens the whole batch of dough. Right, yeah. which, uh, which we hear out of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so he, and he says, I'm confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. And what he says next in uh, verse 10 I think is really very interesting. Uh, They are throwing you into confusion. He refuses to identify by name Mm -hmm. who who they are. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you know we've been been watching basketball this this time of year and. Uh, the idea of, of fouling somebody and being called by the referee and a penalty, a free throw, and so forth. Uh, Paul questioning, who cut you off? They'll pay the penalty. Sounds like a foul shot. Kind of. <laughs> a bunch of them. Right. <laughs> so, um, and then he wants to say that um, the power of the cross must not be negated or, or destroyed by those who put in its place, mm-hmm. keeping the law of Moses. Mm-hmm. And Paul gets to the point of using extreme language here in saying if they're going to go cutting on people with the idea of trying to earn their way to heaven, they need to cut themselves all the way. And his graphic language <laughs> makes the point. <laughs> right. In verse 12, uh, why don't they go the whole way and uh, emasculate themselves. Castrate themselves. Yes, right. yes. Yeah. Now, the big issue here in, in Paul that he's really aimed at <clears throat> is to be found in the title of the lesson, Freedom mm-hmm. in Christ. Mm-hmm. And if I could back up and make one summary statement, it would be this. 
Um, there is a, a, you might say, a pair of opposites. And um, in the first case, it is law versus grace. It is not law that saves or law keeping, but it is the grace of God that saves. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, uh, subunit under that is it's also law versus faith because grace in Paul's mind was never separated from faith. Right. So <clears throat> grace is what God extends and faith is the human response. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now that, that means if you're not under law, you, you have to be under something that is going to control your action, mm -hmm. control your sense of ethics, right and wrong, what you should do, what you should not do. If you remove law and rules, what's left? That's where he brings in another contrast of flesh and spirit. Flesh versus spirit. Right. And, and the, again, you've got some people promoting legalism as a yeah. way to earn your way to heaven. And others are throwing all that out and, and Going the flipping, opposite direction. flipping the pendulum to the other extreme yeah. and saying everything goes, whatever you want. It's a wild life. And, and Paul was accused of advocating uh, this kind of libertine uh, mm -hmm. attitude toward life. It, mm -hmm. There's no, no wrong. Do whatever you want. Yeah, and that's not what he was saying. And, and what he says in verse 1 and repeats in verse 13, that in Christ we are called to freedom, and for freedom Christ has set us free. And he, he goes on to say again, you were called to freedom. That's the life we have and, in and Christ. Freedom from the law. Freedom from the law. And law keeping. Right. Okay. And freedom from lawlessness. Now, the there's other one experience. other issue here then that he has got to make. And he does this both in Galatians and in Romans. Mm -hmm. uh, and Romans follows this. Uh, Two letters uh, are very similar. Very. And yes. dealing with the same issue. Mm -hmm. Because there was some fusion that got all the way to Rome. Paul mm -hmm. had never been to Rome. And the same confusion about what was it that Paul was saying about keeping the law. Mm -hmm. um, and is he advocating uh, uh, Epicurean uh, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die kind of mm -hmm. the theology or philosophy? No. He is saying what limits us and directs us and teaches mm -hmm. us about what we should do and should not do is the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, and his freedom he's talking about, we usually think in terms of freedom from bondage, freedom from slavery, yes. but it's also freedom too. It's, a, it's a, a, a positive emphasis that Paul is making, the opportunity, the fulfillment, the celebration of life, the delight in God, the freedom we have in Christ is just tremendous. And why would you go back into bondage? Well, I always put it this way, law keeping uh, is uh, uh, challenges you to the media, mediocre, mm -hmm. the C student who says, oh, C is good enough for me. Mm -hmm. Whereas freedom in Christ is the challenge to go beyond the average mm -hmm. and to uh, grow and uh, be, uh, to areas and places and standards that you never knew you could reach. Right. And Christ leads us forward, you know, and, uh, and um, law keeping just is the minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, what, yeah. what you, and Christ teaches us in the Sermon on the Mount. Yes. And, and where Paul uses that running analogy, the who cut you off, makes me think about Hebrews where we lay aside all the weights and things that hold us back and run freely the race that's set before us. With and every ounce of energy we've the, got. The freedom we've got in Christ enables us to run freely. Now, the next lesson is going to go back and deal with spirit versus flesh. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll say more about that next time. The last, uh, he, he wants to make the point, love your neighbor as yourself. Faith leads to love. Mm -hmm. now, you, you see that coming out in verse 6. 
And then in love your neighbor in verse 14. Right. And we see that all through Paul's writings and all through the whole New Testament. And, and in the lessons to come, that emphasis on love will be even stronger. Right. So um, love is generated through thankfulness, but also an appreciation for what for God's grace mm -hmm. and for the gift of Jesus Christ and faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. um, and that leads us to see love and to accept love and to love in return. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, I think, the point that he is making here. The last uh, two verses, we, we kind of wonder about that. They seem to be a tack on. It's... it's <laughs> He, he cuts the, the the lesson writer cuts in the middle of the paragraph here. It's too bad. Yeah, we're gonna. In other words, we we pick up next lesson mm -hmm. with exactly where this lesson stops. Unfortunately, they don't repeat the the two verses right. next week. <laughs> yeah, but but we'll see to it that that gets done. And here uh, we have this word, this terminology. Uh, and Paul elsewhere puts it this way, if we live in faith, then and by the Spirit, then let us here in verse 16, walk in faith mm -hmm. by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the difference? Well, I, I, here we have to look at uh, what we know about Jewish mentality. Paul was a Jewish he was a rabbi in, mm -hmm. in essence, and he is using Jewish terminology on these would-be Jews. Mm -hmm. Walk by the Spirit is a Hebraism, which means make choices about what you do and don't do based on what? And the Jew says based on law. Mm -hmm. And Paul is saying based on Spirit. The spirit in love. In love. Right. And um, it is the spirit that guides us mm -hmm. into proper words, thoughts, mm -hmm. actions. In the next passage, as we'll look at in, in next week's lesson, he gets very specific about what that means and how it's lived out. It's but, defined very, very clearly. But the broad perspective is that we live by faith walking in love and walking by the means spirit. you make choices and live your life mm -hmm. and in fact that's what the word uh, for for the same issue in in the Hebrew is mm -hmm. halacha means your walk mm -hmm. your decisions mm -hmm. the kind of life that you live uh, and um, of course there's a whole lot about that issue based on law in rabbinic literature. Hmm. I've had the joy of reading it <laughs> <laughs> in my uh, graduate work. So, well, it's time for us to close up we, uh, our discussion, freedom in Christ. What does it mean to be free in, free in Christ? Now, as you say, not from, from something, but to something. Right. And it's to be like Christ. Amen. On that uh, wonderful theme and challenge, we conclude this morning, and we will be taking up with right where we left off next week. And so we hope you'll come back, and we pray that God will grant you uh, every blessing this week. This has been In the Word, a study of the International Bible School lesson with Dr. Lee Magnus. Professor Emeritus of Bible from Milligan College, and Dr. Bill Gwaltney, Professor Emeritus of Bible of Milligan College. Join us again next week for another lesson from the International Bible School Lesson Text. This has been a production of the First Christian Church Television Ministries.